The African grey parrot is a much sought after domestic pet the world over. African greys occur in nature in 20 range states, spanning the equatorial region of the African continent. In order to meet the demand for African greys, South Africa has been established as one of the leading countries for the legal and humane breeding of these birds. There are almost 100,000 breeding African greys at more than 1,600 breeding facilities all over South Africa. CITES, or the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species, is an international governmental organization established in 1975. Its function is to regulate the international trade in endangered species. All endangered species are divided into three categories or appendices, with Appendix 1 being the most endangered. The upcoming 17th Conference of the Parties to CITES, also known as COP17, will be hosted by South Africa. Here, some member countries, such as Gabon, will propose that African grey parrots be uplisted from Appendix 2 to Appendix 1. In order for a species to be upgraded to Appendix 1, it must be under serious threat of becoming extinct in nature and all commercial trade of the species is prohibited. The Parrot Breeders Association of Southern Africa, or PASA, strongly objects to this proposal and doesn't believe that it is justified. Of the 20 range states where these birds occur, there is no evidence of exploitation in seven of these regions. Of the remaining 13 range states, exploitation stopped more than 10 years ago in nine out of those 13 countries. The other four countries stopped exploitation respectively in 2013 and 2014 and two countries being the DRC and Cameroon carried on in 2015. CITES did not approve any African grey export quota for 2016. There will therefore be no exports from Cameroon and the DRC for the next few years. At least not until a new non-detrimental finding is presented to CITES. PASA believes this will protect the species in the wild. Appendix 2, with a zero quota, prohibits the trade in wild-caught birds. An uplisting to Appendix 1 will have quite the opposite effect, as it will also ban all exports of captive-bred African greys. If South Africa cannot trade further in African greys as a result of the fact that they are now on CITES 1, there will be a greater demand for wild-caught African greys again. That can increase smuggling of African greys and that is certainly not in the interest of the birds in the wild. More than 65,000 African grey chicks are bred in South Africa each year under strictly controlled conditions. The vast majority of these birds are exported to markets in the Middle East and Far East. Since September 2015, no African greys caught in the wild are permitted to be imported into South Africa. About 5,000 chicks are retained each year for future breeding stock. South Africa has a well-organized and controlled legal African grey industry. South Africa is the most successful breeder of African greys worldwide. And seven out of every eight African greys that's traded internationally was originally bred in South Africa. According to the Gabon proposal, between 40 and 60% of wild-caught birds die before they reach their final destination. If South Africa breeds 75,000 babies a year, this represents about 150,000 birds that can be saved from the wild. African greys take up to five years to reach maturity and can breed for up to 40 years in captivity. When not breeding, the birds are kept in communal aviaries. Meticulous records are kept of each bird's breeding record. This particular pair has been breeding for me since 1995 and we normally ring the babies at the age of 14 days. Breeding pairs are allowed to naturally incubate and hatch their eggs in special breeding cages. African greys are excellent parents. We don't interfere with their breeding cycle by removing the eggs from the nests for artificial incubation. Between the ages of four to six weeks, the babies are removed for hand rearing in specially equipped nursery facilities. This is a typical African grey baby hand rearing facility. However, in my area it is not 
the breeding season for African greys. That is the reason why we are not involved in hand rearing at this moment. The parrots are kept on a healthy diet that contains all the necessary nutrients to ensure a successful breeding program. As part of a well-balanced diet, we also supply the birds with a variety of freshly cut greens every day. In South Africa, a possible uplisting of African greys to Appendix 1 will also have a huge negative impact on the more than 2,500 workers in the African grey breeding industry. There's about 1,600 breeders of African greys in South Africa and over 20,000 people is dependent on the income of the African greys. If we cannot export African greys anymore, those people will lose their livelihoods. The Gabon proposal for the uplisting of African greys to Appendix 1 contains several inaccuracies about captive breeding in South Africa that are all refuted by the local industry. PASA strongly feels that an uplisting of African greys will not be in the interest of the wild population. We will partake in the upcoming COP17 meeting and we already called on the South African government not to support the uplisting. At the meeting, we will also call on all the other countries not to support the uplisting.